Hi everyone, Ed from Bubble Vans here and welcome to another product release video where we're going to show you our new underfloor heating kit and we're going to be installing it into this Peugeot Boxer. So it's already got one of our hydraulic systems so we're going to go over essentially what you get in the kit, how to install it, how to put the grooves in the floor, what the bits are and then we're going to actually get it running and show you how it all works. So let's get cracking. So we'll just show you what you get in the kit. You get your diverter valve to divert the coolant through the underfloor heating pipes and a temperature sensor. A series of uh, stainless steel fittings, um, some to connect to the pipe you've already got uh, on the hydraulic system, some to connect to the underfloor heating, and that just screws together like that, nice and simple. Hose clamps, a little router template to help you with the grooves under the floor, some nice flexible um, underfloor heating pipe, and the amount of these this you get depends on the kit you've ordered. Uh, some foil tape just to tape it all together at the end and some spreader plates which again depends on what size kit you've ordered. So here we are in the van and we're just starting to lay out exactly where we're going to put the pipes. There's a few things we need to avoid. We've got a plug hole down there which is where our shower is going to go. It's going to go here. We've got a travelling seat which has got some bolts that go through to the outside of the van. So they're going to go here. Other than that I've pretty much got free reign. There's nothing else I need to avoid. So we've got a central uh, walking area where you're going to be cooking food, getting in and out of bed, which we'd like to be heated. The entranceway as it comes around towards the sliding door. Um, this bit's going to be raids, so we're not too worried about heating this part because the, the pipes will essentially be contained in a confined space, so it's kind of pointless. Um, but our calorifier is going to go in the bench seat just here. Um, so we're going to partition it off just above the calorifier, so we'll get a decent amount of storage space. And then underneath we've got our um, water tank, and then we're also going to have the underfloor heating pipes running into this unit as well. So these are the aluminium plates that you get with the kit. We just need to now work out exactly where we're going to put the pipes and the plates in order to get heat distribution throughout the floor. So these are 150 millimeter centers and our pipes are going to be running up and down inside these channels. So one thing to bear in mind when you are starting to plan this is that they do need to start and finish in the same place. So our first pipe runner is going to run down here around the plug hole in the back. But it looks like from the calculations I've done, we're going to finish over here. So I need to then put one return, which is going to go back around all of the pipes and then back up this way. Or I could take it around this way. But as long as it's starting finishing in the same place, that's the main thing. So the next thing to do is to start marking it up on the floor and then we can start cutting. So that's everywhere marked out on the floor. This is going to be my send and return here. Um, this is our return, so that's coming back. This one's going to come down here under the shower unit there. You can see those little ends that I've done. Um, and then it goes into the main floor section. So we go all the way up, a couple of arcs, out towards the door, back again. And then our last one there, you can see that it just goes back behind that last button and then just returns under my floor. So what was really handy when I did this is that in the kit you get one of these. Um, so this is two things, it's a router guide, but it's also an easy way of measuring 150 mil centers, because I should have to put this on any bit and that's about my 150 mil center. I can also use it to sketch um, corner rads as well. So when we're laying everything out, I can draw on that one, I can put that there. That's drawn my 150, all I need to do then is get that in line and that's another 150. I do it the other side as long as this is square then I know that it's all going to line up and when I cut these it's all going to fit nicely together and the spread of plates will just pop straight in. So we've got our marks on the floor the next step is to turn those marks into channels where we're going to put our spreader plates and our underfloor heating pipes. So the first thing to do is get your trim router set to a depth of about um, sort of 14 15 millimeters Drop that in at the edge of every U-shape, sort of about here on your mark, and just make a little circle. And what that means is when you come to actually create the U-shape, you don't have to feed this in through the template because you will end up catching the template. Template spins off, not very safe. So that's the first step, you make your little groove. Secondly, we're gonna pop this in and just follow that around. Again, we'll be at depth of about 12 millimeters, which is the depth of this cutter. I don't have to worry about getting one that's exactly 16 because I can do the first cut and then I can just drop this down and the ball bearing will follow the Celotex um, on the last pass and just make it all exactly the right depth. So you don't need to worry about getting exactly a 16 millimeter cutter. 
Once I've got my U-shapes, I've got this template. And essentially this is just a groove, which is the right thickness to get my pipes in. I've made it about 17, 18 mil, something like that. Um, which will just give us the clearance to get the pipes in. Uh, I'm gonna use the track saw to create two strips down the outside. This is literally just for the router to remove the Celotex. I'm only gonna go up to the plywood. So once I'm up to the plywood, I'm gonna get a chisel and I'm just gonna tap out the middle bit in the plywood. The ply will split relatively easily uh, and leave me with a nice groove. Right, so let's get cracking. So when you are routing, just make sure that the bit in the router isn't spinning as you insert it through the template. So pop it through and then turn the router on and then start the cut. It is worth having some dust extraction whilst you're doing this because the Celotex can produce quite a lot of dust. If you don't have any dust extraction, um, you might want to consider using a knife or similar to re remove some of the Celotex before you start cutting. Once you've done your track sawing, you can just peel off the top layer of the insulation. That means you're going to clean a cut when you run the router through it and just create a bit less mess. Our grooves have been cut now, all to the right depth. And all we have to do with our plates is just push those into the grooves and that's just a nice compression fit there. Don't have to worry about any glue or anything like that. Just try and leave plenty of clearance around where you put your U-shape so you can push the pipes in, which is what we're about to do next. So when you're putting the pipes under the floor, just make sure you get a nice smooth bend. You'll notice with this pipe, it doesn't have a memory like some of the other underfloor heating pipes. So it doesn't tend to spring back, which is a real advantage when it comes to fitting it. You'll notice I did have to multi-tool the insulation a little bit wider in a couple of places. Um, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, then you can cut the channels at more like 20 mil. And that'll just mean you don't need to adjust them like I had to. Just make sure there's no kinks uh, when you do the bends and you've got a nice smooth flow. After the pipe's down, we start to put the foil tape on. This is just to conduct the heat from the pipe onto the spreader plates, just to get a bit more heat conduction, um, just using the foil tape that comes with the kit. The other thing I've done is just added this sensor. It's just taped to the underside of the spreader plate and just sits in the Celotex. That tells us the temperature of the floor, um, and that's what we'll use as feedback just to moderate the floor temperature. Next step is to put the ply down, um, and then get that screwed down, and then we can start attaching this to the rest of the heating system. So we've just got everything mocked up inside the van to show you it all working. Just to show you the layout of the coolant, um, coolant tank, this drops straight down into the circulation pump, goes to the heater, which is under the floor around here. Um, from there, it comes back, it comes up through the floor into this blower box, which is underneath the driver's seat. That's blowing forwards. Uh, the idea of this is that it's gonna sort of heat the cab um, rather than heating anyone's feet directly, so just give a nice warmth, um, sort of indirectly. Uh, the coolant pipes then go back down through the floor, they go all the way to the back of the van, to the centre of the floor there, where the second blower box is going to be. We don't know exactly where the pipes are going to be, so we haven't put those in yet, so there's no second blower box just yet. Uh, from then it comes back, it comes back up this pipe, uh, and then it comes into this valve. Now this valve is the one you get with the underfloor heating kit. And the idea is it sends the water either into the calorifier or alternatively through there into the floor. Um, through the floor and back. And it just essentially comes into a T. Uh, the T you can see under there. It's also the return from the calorifier goes into the T as well. And that comes back into the coolant tank. So that's your loop. Um, on the controller, uh, we've got our underfloor heating sensor which is plugged in there. Everything is normal. The only difference is we've added an extra connection here for the valve. So that's what's going to control the floor temperature. So we'll just start this up. So we'll turn the air and water heating on. Um, and while that boots up, I'll show you the extra menus that we've got for the underfloor heating. So we can press the off button and hold that down for a few seconds comes up with some options so we can set the temperature of the floor so normally you'd want that about somewhere between 30 and 36 something like that the hysteresis essentially that's the temperature at which the valve opens and closes so we're going to have the valve open until it goes to 36 and it's allowed to drop by one degree before the valve opens to let more water into the floor so normally two or three degrees is fine on that there we go press the menu button to store that and then when we go back to our 
and the floor heating button. Turn that on. We can see that the heat light has come on and that means that this valve, when our coolant comes back again, instead of it going into the water tank, it's going to be going under the floor. Now the benefits of that are obviously the floor heating, but also it means that if your tank is cold, it's not going to have to heat up the water in the tank before it starts um, to heat up the air. So it does mean the blower boxes should come on a little bit quickly. So one thing you can do with hydraulic systems is add things like towel rails. Um, now, there are companies out there that do hydraulic systems that do towel rails. All they do is they tee off the coolant line and they limit the flow and essentially it means that your towel rail, if you let it, will get to 80 or 85 degrees, um, which is not particularly safe. Last thing you want to do is turn your towel, mail, make, turn your towel rail into a panini maker because um, you can do yourself some serious damage. So we use a similar sort of system with a valve and a temperature sensor and we have a feedback loop and that means that by opening and closing the valve we're going to keep the towel rail at a sort of safe temperature. So if you are interested in that then do give us a shout because it's a really nice addition to have in your van. So we've been running for about six minutes now. You can see that the return pipe there is, is quite hot but the one going into the tank has really got no heat in it at all. The one underneath it which is sending the heat under the floor that is really really hot. So that's starting to send the hot temperature, hot coolant under the floor through those send and return pipes. Just so you can tell it's a real test, I forgot to add uh, a pipe so that any water can sort of expand up the pipe and has dribbled out all over the wood. Um, so yeah, just to show you the tank is actually full. Um, 20 minutes in, we did start with this on about 35 degrees but we're up to 66 degrees now. Oh, I've just had a dribble out of there as well. Better go and fix that. So now we're 19 minutes in. You can see that those spreader plates have worked really effectively spreading the heat out through the floor. Um, so yeah, we're at sort of 26, 28 degrees. We've only had the heater on for 19 minutes. I've really got the water up to 63 degrees. The van's nice and warm and the floor's got to a really nice temperature. Um, you really don't want the floor warmer than this because it does start to get a little bit uncomfortable but obviously you can change the temperature settings uh, according to your preference. One feature that is really nice is our AC air and water heating routine which keeps the van warm when you're on hookup by using the element in the calorifier and that does work with the underfloor heating. So you can hear that I've just turned it on it's just starting to circulate the coolant and our blower box is turned on because the temperature in the van's a bit low. And then as soon as we've got some hot coolant pumped around, that's turned on the valve and we're actually going to send that coolant underneath the floor. But if it detects that the coolant temperature drops, it'll then divert the um, valve back through the tank to reheat the coolant and keep doing that until the floor is warmed up. So a really nice little feature for when you're on a hookup that you can use someone else's electricity rather than burning your own diesel. So I hope that's been useful. If you are looking at going to colder climates in your van, living in it year round, or ski seasons, that sort of thing, having a heated floor to step onto when you wake up would be an absolutely fantastic addition to your van. If you've got any questions, then info at bobblevans.co.uk or pick up the phone and give us a ring. We'd be happy to answer any questions you've got or drop them into the comments below. Okay, enjoy your van build.